Hey, this is Pastor Aaron Pino. I'm the lead pastor of Overflow Church, and I just want to say thank you for listening to our podcast. It's my prayer that this message encourages you, builds your faith, and helps develop you in the spiritual maturity. Enjoy the message. If you would, go and turn with me to Revelation chapter 5, starting in verse 9. Revelation chapter 5, starting in verse 9. Um, And as you turn there, I'm actually going to give us uh, a lot of scripture today um, because I love the Bible. Amen. Anybody else love the word of the Lord? Me too. Um, So I'm going to give us a lot of scripture today. I don't know if you realize this or not, but it is actually 100% A-OK to read the Bible in church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you can you can read the Bible at home too, but I'm just telling you, it's it's good to read the Word of the Lord in the congregation of the saints. Can I get an amen, somebody? And so today we're going to cover a lot of ground. And so, uh, yeah, have you found Revelation chapter five, verses nine through ten yet? Yes, if you have, just go ahead and stand with me briefly, and we're going to honor the reading of God's Word by standing. And I promise I'll let you sit down for. For three, four hours as I preach this morning, okay? It's a joke. Thank you. Revelation chapter 5, starting in verse 9, it says this, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Hallelujah. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that has redeemed us unto the Father out of every tribe, out of every language, out of every tongue. And so, Lord, today we thank you that we have redemption through the ultimate sacrifice that we could not pay ourselves, but your your holy and precious son Jesus has paid. And so, Lord, because of this, we thank you that today we are called your children. Today we are kings and priests in your kingdom and on the earth. And we thank you that we shall reign on the earth. And so, Lord, today, as I declare your word, as as we release your word into the earth, Lord, would you put me on like a jacket this morning? Would you allow the anointing of God to come forth to light up what needs to be lit up, to break what needs to be broken? And God, for there to be a spirit of wisdom and revelation in this house today. We speak to every adversary of, the, uh, of, our, of our souls that would try to hinder the, the reception of this word. And we rebuke you now. Put your hand on your head and just say, my mind is clear and my spirit is open. Lord, we declare this in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone shout amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, I'm, I'm super glad uh, for the series that we're in. Um, the series is called Kings and Priests. Uh, several months ago, actually before the ending of last year, I was in prayer and I said, God, uh, I need some direction. I need some help. How, how do we steer the ship? that is called overflow. What do you want to release into the people that you have assigned to this house that I'm in charge of stewarding? Well, he spoke to me several things. He spoke to me, uh, have 21 days of prayer and fasting, call it a sacred season, pray, fast, and give. We did that at the beginning of the year. How many of y'all grateful for that season in your life that you got to start your year off right with the Lord? So grateful for that. Um, After that, the Lord said, then I want you to teach the people the power of praise. I said, oh, I could, I could do that. We, we could shout in the microphone, can't we, Chris? Come on now. That's right, you know. So we, we talked about praise, and he also taught me about future series and things that we're going to talk about. So here in the, in the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to, I'm going to do a series on Holy Ghost family. How do you raise your family to love the Lord? And how do you be a man and wife that are going after the things? Would you guys like that? 
Okay. Now listen, if you like that, you got to invite your friends and your family to be a part of that, okay? Uh, because I believe that this is essential for the body of Christ, all right? But one of the things he also told me about is he said, I want you to talk to my people and remind them and to teach them about their identity, their authority, and their function in the earth. Okay? And you might say, Pastor Aaron, why is that important? I'll tell you why that's important, because I have met many believers who live underneath what God has ordained for their life. You do understand, and you, if you've been here for any amount of time, you've heard me say this before, you do understand And if you don't, you will, that we have not been grafted into this kingdom, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, to warm a chair. Now, I told you I wasn't going to have you stand up anymore, but stand up one more time. Come on, everyone, stand up just one more time. And I want you to put put your hand on your seat, okay? And feel the warmth of your seat right there. Now, you need to understand that your job is not to just keep that seat warm. Hello? But I've met too many believers, you may be seen, I've met too many believers where they think that they have been saved just to go to church on a Sunday morning, to be lullaby to death, to be given a great moral talk, and to go out through their week and to live like the hell that God has supposedly saved them from. My friend, I am, I've been sent here by God this morning to tell you that that is not your assignment. Your assignment is not just to be saved, to warm a seat, and then to just make it barely by and go to heaven one day. Pastor Aaron, you tell us this all the time. Yeah, I do. I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face because until you get this deep down in your spirit, I won't stop telling it to you. I've met too many people. They've been saved 15, 20, 25 years, 30 years. And guess what? They are just satisfied with warming a bench. Friend, you need to understand something. There is too much on the inside of you to just sit back and to sit down. Well, I don't know, Pastor Aaron. You know, I I don't know if there's really anything uh, special on the inside of me. Listen, yes, there is. Well, you don't really know me, Pastor Aaron. Listen, I don't have to know your story. I know his story. And his story tells me that he paid a price for something that was worth the price that was paid. Do you understand that if I came up to you and I said, hey, I want to sell you this flat screen, 105 inch TV for $3. You're going to look at me one and say, man, this guy, this probably fell off a back of truck somewhere. You know, he doesn't know what he has on his hands. Or you're going to look at me and say, what's wrong with it? Right? Friend, the price paid for something determines its worth. So whenever it comes to our life, God did not pay a stick of bubble gum for you. What God did for you is he bankrupted heaven just for the opportunity, not even guarantee for a relationship with you. Pastor Aaron, what do you mean? I mean this. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin, to die a gruesome death after living a perfect life just for an opportunity at a relationship with you. So, friend, if you sit back and don't think that you're worth anything, I want to let you know you are sadly mistaken. Because even though you might not see your worth, even though the people around you might not see your worth, there is one in heaven by the name of Jesus who has seen your worth and says you are worthy. There is one by the name of Jesus who sees you and says, you know what? They have more to offer than just being saved and to sit down. And we know this in scripture because we just read it in Revelation chapter 5. It's a, it's a scene around the throne room of heaven where the angels are worshiping the one who is called faithful and true. They're worshiping the one who is called the Alpha, the Omega, the one who is called the beginning and the end. Hello. They're worshiping Jesus. And as they're worshiping Jesus, they are singing a new song, which is a testimony of what God has done. 
And they say, it says, they sing a new song. And it says, for you have redeemed us to God through the blood. Out of every tribe, out of every nation, and out of every language. And watch this. He hasn't just redeemed us just to have us sit down. He says this. You have redeemed them by the blood of the lamb. And you have made them kings and priests. What? A king and a priest. See, many of us, we don't understand what that really means because we grew up in America. Or we grew up in in some kind of country where there was no kingship. I don't know of anybody, maybe you're here, but maybe you didn't grow up in Great Britain where you had the royal family and kings and queens, right? Now, if you're here, just throw a sock at me and let me know that you're in the room, okay? But many of us, because we do not have a concept for kingdom, when we hear the term kings and priests, we just think, all right, I'm a king and I'm a priest. But we have no idea what that means. Hello? Can I tell you what that means? And I'm recapping from the first week because I preached this two weeks ago and we were out last week, so I'm just trying to catch everyone up to speed, okay? If you want a more in-depth, go to our Spotify or our Apple podcast. You can listen to the message afterwards, all right? I look at the statistics because I want to see how many of you are listening, and not everyone in the room is listening. No, I'm teasing. That's not, all right. I'm not saying, God, I'm not trying to get on you, right? But, <clears throat> but listen, whatever it says that we are kings and priests, you need to understand through the blood of Jesus Christ, you and I are now royalty, Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you are no longer who you used to be. You are now just like Jesus in the earth. 1 John chapter 4 tells us that just as Jesus was, so are we. Jesus operated in the earth out of his revelation of his beloved identity as a son. So Jesus in the earth operated as a king. Hello? So he moved and operated in dominion, in power, in authority in the earth because he was a king. But he did not just stop there. He moved in the earth with dominion, power, and authority because he was a king. But he did that because he was a priest as well. You see, kings in the earth ministered to the people, but priests in the earth ministered to God. And whenever we catch the revelation of our identity as sons of God, as kings and priests, we then will understand. You ready for this? We then will understand that our service to people is actually ministry to the Lord. And that our ministry to the Lord will actually result in ministry and service to people. Hello? So my friend, you need to understand something. God has saved you and grafted you into this kingdom because he knows that you have something to offer. He knows that there is something on the inside of you that is a represented, uh, represents his kingdom. Amen? You need to understand that as kings and priests with operating in this identity, we have now been called to rule on the earth. Jesus modeled this. He demonstrated ruling on the earth. He did this through the revelation of his sonship. I already read all this. Uh, let, me, let me speed up on my notes here. I, I, I went past my notes. Glory be to God. It's because it's deep on the inside of me. You know what I mean? So we are kings and priests and designed to rule on the earth just as Jesus ruled on the earth. Amen? Amen. Now that we are in this thing, now that he has called us kings and priests, here's what we need to begin to comprehend and understand. And it is the culture of the kingdom. Because I could tell you all day long that you are a Pino. But until you get into my house, you live with me and you see how we develop our culture. You might carry my name, but you don't have my culture. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I've, I, I remember growing up, I used to tell my, my parents, and this was a mistake because uh, my, my parents believed on laying on of hands growing up. Anybody else's parents believed in that too? Yeah. But I remember I'd, I'd hang out with my friends and I'd go to my mom and, and my mom said, why, why did you do that, Aaron? I said, because my friends did that. And she said, well, they aren't a Pino. And we don't do that kind of stuff in this house. 
And so uh, my personality was a little tested. So I had to go, you know, I had to go up to see how really close I could go to the line. The only way to know where the line is at to act is to actually cross over the line. Can I get amen, somebody? <clears throat> now, some of you rule fathers are saying, oh, my gosh, no way. That's why they put a border and then a line and then a medium whenever you're driving. in the No, you don't try to get as close. No, right. So I'd go back and I and I do it again. And my mom didn't say, why are you doing that? But they would just lay. They would they believed in laying on a hands anointed with oil. Glory be to God. You know what I mean? And I learned that the culture in my family growing up was not what the world outside was doing, but what was happening inside my house. You understand that even here in America, whenever you leave this room today, no matter which way you go out of the parking lot, whenever you drive, you're going to be driving on the right hand of right side of the road, the right hand side of the road. You understand that? The reason why you're going to be doing that is because that is part of the culture of America. Now, if you try to take the culture of America driving on the right hand of the road and you go to maybe Great Britain or New Zealand and you try to bring that culture over there, well, guess what? <laughs> she just said, you about, to, you about to meet Jesus, right? <laughs> so you need to understand that, that there is a culture even to this kingdom. There's even a culture in your home, whether you realize it or not. People carry their own personal culture. You realize that? Moms and dads, you have a culture. Single people, you have a culture. Uh, married people, you have a culture, whether you realize it or not. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to begin to establish the culture of the kingdom in our lives. Because whenever you understand that this is the culture of the kingdom, it's not something that you have to fight in order to do. When you understand that this is now part of your own culture, it becomes part of who you are and you begin to operate in the culture of the kingdom where you are a king and a priest. Does that make sense? I've met people who shout out that we're part of the kingdom, that we're kings and priests, that this is the culture of the kingdom, but they cannot produce it in their lives. And part of the reason why they cannot produce it in their lives is because you ready for this. This is going to be really profound. You ready for a revelation? Many times people cannot produce these, these things in their life because they have never been taught. They have never been taught. They've never been exposed. They've never been told, this is how you do it. This is not how you do it. Now, before I get into the culture of the kingdom that we're going to talk about today, will you just give me permission to teach about this? Is that okay? Come on, I need more people than that. Is it, do I have permission? Okay. I'm going to do it anyway, but it just makes me feel a whole lot better whenever you say yes, all right? And here's what I want you to do. I'm about to talk to us about some stuff, and I know how sometimes people are. Because they've heard things before, maybe they think they have a concept of it. When they begin to hear it, they automatically shut down. Today, don't shut down on me. Is that okay? Because I'm telling you, today I'm about to give you one of the keys to the culture of the kingdom that if you can grasp, it will revolutionize your life. I have seen it revolutionize my life. I'm going to tell you some stories about that here in a little bit. But it's okay that I talk to you about the culture of the kingdom. Yes? Okay. Hallelujah. I got to stick to my notes, y'all. I'm getting off my notes. Pray for your pastor. Okay? Watch this. We don't have to turn there, but Matthew 16, chapter 19, Jesus is talking to Peter and he says, Peter, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Friends, as kings and priests in this kingdom, you and I now have the keys to this kingdom. Now, what you need to understand is this keys are meant for one thing and one thing only. Keys are meant to give us access. The keys to your car gives you access to your car. The keys to your home gives you access to your home. The keys to the front door over here gives you access to this entire school. When God gave us keys and he told Peter, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. He was saying, Peter, you now have access to the things of the kingdom. And I believe that one of the keys that God is releasing in this hour to establish the culture of the kingdom in our life. You ready for this? is the key of honor. The key of honor. 
Mm. Y'all just need to look at your neighbor and tell him to unbuckle because I'm about to go some places today, okay? Look at your other neighbor and say, I hope you clipped your toenails because he's going to be stepping on some toes today. I just heard someone say nasty. That's all right. Watch this. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it. It's Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. And Paul the Apostle is talking here to the, the church in Rome, and he says this. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. Giving uh, in brotherly love, in honor, watch this, giving preference to one another. Now, let me, let, me, let me read in a couple different translations what it says there because I'm reading now the New King James and there's some other translations that say it better. In the NIV, it says this, honor one another above yourselves. Hallelujah. The ESV, the English Standard Version says this, which this is like a literal translation. It says this, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Whew. Romans chapter 13, verse 7. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some scripture and I'm going to teach on this, okay? Romans chapter 13, verse 7 says this. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear or respect to whom respect is due, and honor to whom honor is due. Mm. Friend, you need to understand this morning that honor is the key, is a key of the kingdom. Honor is a key of the kingdom. Mm, just hang on. I'm, I'm, I feel something about to happen in the room today. Some hearts are going to be unlocked. Some mindsets are going to be unlocked. Some of y'all been walking in dishonor for so long you don't even realize it. And God can't set me here today to help set you free. Honor simply means to pay or to, or to return worth. To pay or to return worth. You guys track with me so far? So a lot of times people think that honor is just saying, I honor you. But listen, you can't just say you honor them and show them honor that way. Honor is actually an active lifestyle. It's a posture of the heart. It's the culture of the kingdom to where it's more than just words. It's actually actions that are backing it up. So if honor means to pay or return worth, we have to recognize that the thing before us is worthy. So I'm going to talk to you about who we honor today. We honor God. We honor people. But we also, in this house, we honor the word of the Lord. Hello? In this house, we honor the presence of God. In this house, we honor prayer. In this house, we honor family. Come on. Why do we honor the word? Because we understand that the word has value. Why do we honor the presence? Because we understand that the presence of the Lord, God himself, has value. Why do we honor family? Because we understand in this house that our families have value. Hello? Oof. Mm-mm-mm. Y'all need to come back next week because I'm going to talk to you about why we honor. Mm. Y'all don't send me away for, for a week, all right? I'm going to come back full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Word of God. Stepping on everybody's toes, okay? What you honor and how you honor will, deter, will, will determine what comes back to you. Can I say it one more time? Y'all with me right now? Yeah, you're not falling asleep. Am I doing all right so far? What you honor and how you honor will determine what comes back to you. If you honor your spouse or give them the worth of just a roommate, that's all you're going to get in return. Oh, come on now. Married people, you need to say amen to that. Come on now. But if you honor your spouse and assign them worth as a precious jewel, worthy of love, affection, and devotion, that's what you're going to get in return. Can I get an amen, somebody? 
Why? Because what you honor and how you honor determine what comes back into your life. If you honor or give worth to your children as mess ups can't get right or failures, guess what? That's what you're going to get in return. I'm going to tell you a story. I remember growing up, I could tell this story. Why not? I have the microphone. Y'all good? I'm good. I know it's a little warm in here. Just wave, wave yourself off, okay? That's all right. <clears throat> I remember growing up, remember we're talking about honor here, right? We're, we're talking about if we assign someone worth. I remember growing up, and maybe you've heard this story before, but in my family, we, I had relatives that because there were so many grandchildren, they gave everyone a nickname. Anybody like that in your family? Okay, uh, that's how it was in my family. And it wasn't until I became a pastor to where this particular family member actually learned my name. I, w- I was 35 years old, right? <clears throat> but I remember growing up, they would call my, 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 my brother a certain name, Mino. They'd call my younger brother a certain name, Mona. That was after we had an Italian grandmother. Her name was Ramona. He, anyway, but whenever it came to me, the way they assigned worth to me is my nickname was Nightmare. Now, don't have no pity for your pastor, okay? I heard some people laugh, and I heard some people go, ah. Uh. Don't have no pity for me, okay? But I remember growing up, I was assigned the identity of a nightmare. And guess what? I said, I could do that. I could do that. So what I do, I begin to act out. I begin to act a fool. I begin to get in fights. I begin to be rageful. I begin to practice with uh, demonic things. Hello? Now, I'm not blaming it completely on on the people who are around me, the relatives, but you know what? It played a part. You know why? Because they honored me through the level in which they saw me, not through the lens of what God saw me. And because they, mm, because they brought me down to their perspective of me, they got exactly what they were expecting to get out of me. But thank God for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Because my name went from nightmare to daydream. Glory be to God. <laughs> But listen, what you honor and how you honor is going to determine what comes back into your life. So if you honor your kids and assign your kids a wealth, mess up, failure, can't get right, you just can't, you're just this, that, and the other. I'm telling you, friend, don't be surprised when you get exactly what you assign them worth for. Hello? But if you give your child honor and assign them a worth that they are your legacy, that they're a gift from God that you're supposed to steward, not as an obligation, but as a delight. Hello? I'm trying to help some parents out here this morning. That's what you're going to get in return. Hello? Mm, can I go one step further? Now just buckle, buckle up, okay? Just buckle up. Now unbuckle the buckle. Come on now. Glory be to God. If you give worth to spiritual authority and leadership just as a fishing buddy, that's your, that, that's someone that just can rub shoulders with you and they're just someone just like you. Guess what? That's all you're going to get out of spiritual authority. Go ahead and get quiet on me. That's all right. But if you give worth to spiritual authority as someone who has been called by God, not as a career, but a calling who has a five-fold ministry grace to help equip you and perfect you, that is what you are going to get. Hello. Amen. Can I get an amen, somebody? Let me tell you a story. Several years ago, I had a bad doctor's report where the doctor told me, hey, Aaron, you have an enlarged heart. And I said, the devil is a liar. I know I love a lot of people, but I ain't have no enlarged heart. Come on now. And guess what? In that moment... I did not need a buddy to come over and to pray for me. 
In that moment, I needed my man of God. Hello. So I know some people in the room, you get all kind of bent out of shape with this language. They're like, ah, I don't know. So many, so many people abuse their power. So many people abuse their, their, their role and their leadership. Listen, some of y'all need to get over that because, because you have dishonored that role. And because you have dishonored that spiritual authority, you have missed out on what God wants for your life. Hello? So whenever I got assigned from this doctor that you have an, an enlarged heart, my friend, I did not need my fishing buddy to come next to me and say, hey, can you just throw one up to the big guy for me? No, I called my spiritual papa in my life. Who I, who I have, at times I have disrespected, but at many times I have respected who I have honored and I esteem him as a man of God. And I called him up and I said, hey, the doctors are telling me this. I need you to come over and lay hands on me and anoint me with oil because the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And guess what? This person who's a spiritual authority in my life, not a fishing buddy, came over they anointed me with oil. When they laid hands on me, I felt heat permeate through my entire chest. And they said, you're healed. I said, amen. And guess what? I went back to the doctor. They ran their blood work. They ran their sonograms. They ran all their tests. And they came, and like two weeks went by and I heard nothing. I was a little nervous. You ever been there before? Like, yo, come on now. Don't, don't keep your boy in the dark now. <laughs> you tell, y'all tell me this is life and death. I got a large heart. I need to know if I need to put some ice in that thing, bring the swelling down. You know what I mean? <laughs> two weeks went by. I didn't hear anything from my doctor. So I called my doctor. I said, hey, doc. What is the word? Because I haven't heard anything. They go, oh, Mr. Pino, I thought someone called you already. I said, no, Doc, nobody's calling me now. Come on. And they said, well, there's, they said, we must have missed, missed something because we've looked at your heart after running all your blood work, running the sonogram, running the EKG, running this, that, and the other. And they said, your heart is completely fine. They said, you look like you have a heart. Come on. Yeah, if you're going to praise, go ahead and praise. They said, you look like you have a heart of a 21-year-old athlete. I said, yes, ma'am, I sure do. Glory be to God. <laughs> I have jokes in my head, but I don't want to dishonor myself. You know what I mean? My friend, listen, what you honor and how you honor will determine what comes back into your life. Honor is not just saying it, but it's actually, uh, uh, honor is not just saying that you honoring it, honor it and grind your teeth as, as you get the job done. No, no, no. True honor is placing a high value on the person above your own preference. Can I say it like that? Holy Ghost, help me out here. Honor Mm. glory be to God yeah. honor is aligning our perspective towards people how heaven perceives people make sense so I just told you earlier that heaven looks at each and every one of us and tells us we're worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus so that means, you ready? Whether you like the person or not, heaven looks at them as worthy. Whether they rub you the wrong way or not, heaven looks at them and says, they're worth it. So whenever you approach people, and I'm, I'm uh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
Whenever you approach people and you look at them and you smile at them to their face, but behind your back you're murmuring and complaining about them, guess what? You're not murmuring and complaining about them. You're murmuring and complaining about the gift of God that's on the inside of them. So in reality, whenever you murmur and complain about a person, you're not really doing it towards the person. You're actually doing it towards God. Because when you murmur and complain against a person, you are subconsciously saying, whether you realize or not, God, I think you got this person wrong. God, I think you have messed up and they really aren't who you say you are. I'm going to go one step further. Just put your toes underneath your chair, okay? Just put your toes underneath your chair. When you murmur and complain against people, you actually make yourself an idol in your own life. Let me tell you why. Idolatry, mm, idolatry is, all right, someone's catching revelation back there. Glory be to God. Go ahead, get it, Lord. Go ahead and get them. But idolatry is saying, God, I know better than what you do. And what happens is not that you carve a graven image out of wood or stone or, or something like that and set it up in your house. But what happens is you take God off the throne of your heart and you put yourself on the throne of your heart. And you say, you know what? I know better than God. Because even though this person is a child of God, if they're a Christian... Even though this person has been counted worthy of the sacrifice of Jesus, if they're not a Christian, even though God says this about them, I really think I know the right thing about them. My friend, that is idolatry. That is sin. Can I make it any more plainer than that? There are some people in the room where you have lived a life of dishonor because you have lived a life according to your preference rather than heaven's perspective. And my friend, I believe that God has sent me here today to tell you it's time for you to repent. Mm. Pastor Aaron, I don't know if I really like this word. Look, you might not like it, but you need it. Glory be to God. You need to turn away from murmuring and complaining about people and begin to ask God, God, would you give me the perspective on this individual because I obviously got it wrong. Hello? Honor is aligning your perspective with heaven's perspective. Amen? Okay. We still good? Y'all good? I'm good? You good? We all good? Let me go one step further. Is this okay? Okay. Heaven saw value in us while the things around us and the people around us did not see value in us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Before you even knew about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, Jesus said, you are worthy of the sacrifice. You with me? And maybe you're in the room today and you say, man, I I don't know what it's like to be worthy. I'm just hearing about this sacrifice for the first time. My friend, I want to let you know that Jesus Christ died for you because he counts you as worthy for his life and he wants a relationship with you. Amen? God honored me with his life even when I did not want a part of his life. We had worth even before we knew we had worth, okay? Okay? So the question then needs to be asked, who do we then honor? Who do we honor? Now, yeah, you can honor things. I told you earlier that we honor things. We honor the word of God here. Can I get amen? We honor prayer here. Can I get amen? Uh, we, we honor family. I already told you all that, right? But I'm talking about people now. Who do we honor? Who do we honor? Who, who are the ones that we honor? You ready for this? We honor God and we honor people. I know this is very elementary for some, but I'm telling you there's people in the room that you need to hear this because you have not been taught this before. Can I get an amen? Amen. 
In this life, we have an obligation to honor God and to honor people. Watch this. It has to be in that order. (laughs) Because if I honor people before I honor God, it's actually a dishonor to him. Because it's saying the people are more important than you. In three weeks, I'm going to talk to us about a spirit of holiness. I'm going to talk to you about how the sons of Zadok were called to minister before the Lord in the Babylonian captivity. And the priests in that day, who were not the priests of Zadok, they actually profaned the worship of God because they preferred people over God. And what they did, oh, help, help pray for your pastor right now, okay? What, what they did in the Babylonian captivity, because they cared more about the people... They brought profane things into the house of God for worship because they honored the people more than what they honored God. I'm going to show this to you in a couple of weeks, the, the, the scripture on this. So you need to understand we honor God and we honor people, but we have to honor God first. Why do we honor God first? Because God is premier in our lives. Hello. Jesus is premier in our lives. So how do we honor God? You ready for this? Let me, let, me, let me move fast. Let me move fast. Is that okay? Malachi chapter 1, 6 through 8. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it for you. Malachi chapter 1, 6 through 8. It says this. And this is God speaking to the prophet Malachi, speaking to his people and to the priests that were in that day. Hmm. Y'all ready for this? Okay. Don't tell me y'all and then get quiet on me later on, okay? Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 1, 6 through, through 8, it says this. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? If I am a master, where is my reverence, says the Lord of hosts? To you priests who despise my name. Let's pause right there. Now we are kings and priests, amen? And in this portion of scripture, God is talking to priests. Why? Because there was people in this day and age where they gave God lip service of honor, but they did not follow it up with their actions of honor. You with me? And so God is calling them to the carpet and says, hey, look, if a father deserves honor and a master deserves honor, where is my honor? Where is my reverence, says the Lord of hosts, to you priests who despise my name? Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? Verse 7, God says, you offered defile food on my altar. But say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the Lord, by saying the table of the Lord is contemptible or without respect. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer the lame and the sick, is that not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Mm. Now, you ever read scripture and just say, I thank God that wasn't me he was talking to. You know what I mean? I mean, God is just tearing them up, up and down right now. Hallelujah. But he says, offer it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? Ouch. Ouch. Now, whenever I talk to you about honor, this is not my opinion, okay? This is the word of God. Y'all still track with me? Am I doing okay this morning still? Okay. These people obviously did not honor God. And what, how did they not honor God? I'll tell you how they, they didn't offer, how they didn't honor God. Because, watch this, they did not give God their best. You understand that we live in a day and age, in a culture, in a society, that we have bred people to think that just barely getting by and just enough is good enough. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get quiet on me, y'all. That's all right. 
Well, you know what, I, could, I, I can kind of move some things over on my taxes over here where they don't see this over here because, you know, it, it, it really, the, the government really doesn't need to know about this anyway. Or, you know what, I'm going to go here. That's all right. I still love you. Hopefully you love me afterwards. You know, I could just show up late to church. They worship anyway for an hour. I could just stroll in there whenever I get up. Well, you know, really, Sundays are hard for me to get up because, you know, I, I, I work throughout the week. Dude, you get, you get up at 5.30 every single, every single day. You know what I'm talking about? You get up at 5.30 every single day. You can't make it to church at 10 o'clock in the morning? Anyway. But we have a culture and society here in America where just giving God barely enough, we think that that is acceptable to the Lord. Now, you need to understand this about God. God is slow to anger. He's abounding in love. He's abounding in grace. But right here, he is speaking to the priests. And he says, where's my honor? And they said, how have we dishonored you? And God says, you have dishonored me because you have not given me your best. You've given me your leftovers. You've given me your sloppy seconds. You've given me your convenience. You've given me not what you have preferred the best, but you have given me the worst of your flock. God goes on to say, I know this maybe doesn't resonate with some people because we don't know how to translate livestock into, into today. But he says, if, he says, some of you have given me blind offerings as a sacrifice. A blind offering, really? I'm going to go here. Some of y'all have just tipped the Lord whenever you come in on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Just sing and pray in the Holy Ghost right here, right now. Hallelujah. But here's the thing. You tip who serves you. You tie to the one whom you serve. And just like in Malachi's day, God had to address the dishonor that he was receiving. God is wanting to speak to some people in the room right now. And he's saying, hey, listen. Am I not worthy of your best? Am I not worthy of your best? Am I not worthy of your best? Friend, you need to understand, you're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for our kids in this room. You're not doing it for your neighbor to your left or your right. When we come together and we worship, when we come together and we serve, when we have the opportunity to give, we're not doing it so we can just turn the lights on here. We're doing it as unto the Lord. Hello. You know how we honor God? We honor God by giving him our absolute best. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and sell your house and give it into the ministry. Okay. Give the whole thing in. Now, if you want to we make the check payable to overflow church, glory be to God. Right. Now, I'm not saying that what I am saying is what, is the, what, what, what do you have that God is worthy of? You know, even this morning as we were praying before anyone got here, man, there was such a strong sense of, of the presence of the anointing of God. Carlos told me a story when we were coming off of worship. He said several years ago, I was in the hospital and uh, they, they gave me a bad doctor's report. I'm butchering his testimony. He says, but, but I, I, I sensed the presence of the Lord. And the very next day I walked out of the hospital when they told me I shouldn't have walked out of the hospital. I said, that's amazing. He goes, pastor, that same presence I felt in that hospital that touched my body and healed me, he said, is the same presence that I felt this morning during prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. But this morning as we were praying, we had our intercessors here. Prayer starts at 9 a.m., y'all. Worship team's still going about 9.20, but you can still pray. I grabbed the microphone whenever we're done. And I just felt, I sensed in my, in my spirit and the Lord say, bring me something. Bring me something. Okay. I began to pray on to that, pray into that. And you know what? So many times, and there's nothing wrong asking for a blessing from the Lord. Amen. I want to be blessed. Anybody else want to be blessed? How many already are blessed? Glory be to God. Uh-huh. There's nothing wrong with asking something from the Lord, but you know what? Some, a lot of times we make the presence of the Lord our priority because we need something from him. 
Maturity is getting into the presence of the Lord and saying, I don't want anything from you. I actually want to give you something. Hello? The way we honor God is by giving him our absolute best. And so for you, that, I don't know what that is for you. You need to pray and ask God, what is my best? And, I'll, and give it to him. And I'm not just talking about money. Maybe, maybe it's your time. Maybe some of y'all need to wake up earlier in the morning and spend some time with the Lord. Now, I'm not trying to say that so you could be more legalistic or religious, but here's the reality. Some of y'all been fighting in your, in, in your relationship with the Lord, and it's because you don't know how to wake up 15 minutes early. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But look, you need to honor God with your time. Maybe that's waking up early and setting some time aside to seek his face. You need to honor God with your talents. There's people in the room right now that, you, that maybe you come to church and you love to worship, but you aren't serving on a team anywhere. Hello? Listen, you want to give God your best? Join a surf team. Join, join a place to where we can serve God in this house. Can I get an amen? We got a setup crew and a teardown crew, and we have a children's ministry. We have a production team. We have welcome. Look, get involved, y'all. It's not to help the people. It's actually an act of service of giving God our very best. You give God your time. You give God your talent. You give God your treasure. Anyway. Amen? And here's what's beautiful about when we honor God. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to move really fast. First Samuel chapter 2 says this, that when we honor God, he actually honors us. I'm running out of time, but let me tell you right now, there is no honor like the honor from the Most High. Amen? So we honor God, and then secondly, we honor people. I don't have time to, to turn there and, and read all this, but 1 John chapter 4, and verses 20, all the way to 1 John chapter 5, it says this, look, love one another in brotherly love. Because, you got it right there? Oh, look, right, it's right there on the screen. Give it up for our production team, everybody. Let me read this. I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to pray for you, okay? If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. I honor God. I just don't honor people. I love God. I just don't love people. Hello? You have to have both of them. We honor God and we honor people. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Next verse. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. I'm talking to you all about keys to the kingdom. The culture of the kingdom, the spirit of honor is going to give you access to things that you need in your life. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. That basically means, look, if you love Jesus, you need to love the children of God too. Remember, keys give you access. When you honor God... With your time, your talent, your treasure, guess what? What you honor and how you honor determines what comes back to you. When you honor God, more of God comes back into your life. When you honor people, you ready for this? The gift of God on the inside of them, you now have access to. Let that sink in. You realize, look to the person to your left and to your right. Go ahead, look at him real quick. Those people around you have a deposit of heaven on the inside of them. Those people around you actually have a gift of God on the inside of them. But if you do not recognize that and if you cannot honor them, you will never have access to that gift. Mm. You know why we choose honor in this house? You know why honor is a part of the culture, the kingdom? Because what God has called us to do in the earth requires everybody. We cannot do this by ourselves. 
Okay, Pastor Aaron, I'll join a serve team. No, it's not even, it, 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 uh, join a serve team. I need you on the serve team, okay? But it's even more than that. You cannot live this Christian life by yourself. I have 50 million scriptures running through my head. I'm not going to give them to you because I need to close. We honor God. We honor people. Honor is a key that gives us access to God and access to the gift of God inside people. Let me close with this story. Several years ago, Ashley and I, we lived in Northwest Indiana, Valparaiso. Anybody ever heard about it? No, you, you shouldn't have heard about it. If you did, I'd be praying for you. But we were there, we were on staff at a church, and, uh, you know, we love the Lord, and glory be to God. <laughs> And there was, a, there was this, this restaurant there called Broadway Cafe. And uh, Valpo was so small, they only had like a McDonald's, a Wendy's, and a, a Walmart, and a Broadway Cafe. And so whenever you got tired of McDonald's and Wendy's, you'd go buy groceries at Walmart, you know what I mean? But whenever you wanted to go out and splurge and have a night out on the town, you'd go to Broadway Cafe and Broadway Cafe was like this little mom and pop diner, Greek diner. I love Greek diners, everybody. It's pretty awesome, right? And so I remember we went there. The very first time we went there, this is before Max was born. Ashley was praying with Max. And we sit down, and our, our waitress, she comes up, and I'm telling you right now, she was having a bad day. You ever go to restaurants and your servers manifest on you? Yeah. Try, be, try being a pastor. You come to church and people manifest on you. Hey, right? My bad, my bad. And so we go to this Broadway cafe and our server's there. And uh, she's just having a really bad day. You know, messes up the drink order. Can't keep the drinks up to par, you know, and if you know anything about me, I, I like to drink water a lot whenever I go to restaurants. I typically order two glasses of water because I'm, I'm a big guy and I get thirsty. So she's, she's falling behind. You know, we order, we're not too particular on our orders. You know, I'm not one like, who's like, well, make sure there's no salt, no pepper because I'll add it myself. I'm not like that. But the order came out wrong and she just flustered. She's nowhere to be found. And uh, in that moment, we had an opportunity. We could either treat her to the perspective that we saw in the natural, or we could have treated her the perspective of how heaven saw her. Yeah. Now listen, she wasn't a believer. She was just an old, she was a Greek mama having a bad day. And so, uh, isn't it hilarious that the servers can have a really bad day, but they always can get the check on time? You know what I'm saying? You gave me horrible service all day long, but now you'd want to get this check on time? Fill my water. Give me, glass, give me a slice of lemon. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'll get back in the spirit. Pray for your pastor. So she comes and delivers the check, and I mean, it's just bad. She, you know, very rude, this, that, and the other. And uh, Ashley looked at me, she goes, what are you going to do for a tip? Now, typically, you know, if you know anything about, I, I typically tip at least 20%. Christians, you better tip at least 20%. If you didn't say amen to that, you need to catch a revelation. Don't be going there trying to witness to somebody and just give them a tip. Plant your corn early in the fall. Don't be giving all that, okay? Drop some coin. So I typically tip at least 20%, okay? So Ashley goes, what are you going to do? And she goes, you're going to give her the typical 20%? I said, no. I'm going to tip the bill. And she goes, what? I said, yeah, you know what? She's having a bad day. And I think there's more to her than what meets the eye. So I tip the entire bill. And you had to pay the, you had to go walk up to the front to pay the bill. And so I go up to the cash, cash register and he's the manager. And he goes, how was everything? And I said, man, 
this is our first time here. And we got, sir, I didn't lie to him, okay? Now, don't look at me like that, some of y'all. Because some of y'all go to restaurants and they ask, how's everything? And you go, it's great. But right before you say, this food is horrible. Anyway, he goes, how was everything? And I said, man, I said, we just got served by the best server in the entire restaurant. And he goes, really, who? And I said, it's that lady right over there. And he goes, really? I said, yes, I, I believe she's, I, I said, she's the best server at this entire restaurant. And you know what he did? He called her over there. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, Lord Jesus. I'm just trying to be a nice guy, being a man of God. I'm in this restaurant right now. Oh, Lord. She comes over and she's thinking she's about to get balled out. And he goes, did you serve this table? She goes, uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And he goes, listen what this gentleman just said. So at this point, she's like, me like, oh, no. And I said, ma'am, you are the best server in this entire restaurant. And she went from having a bad day to, well, well thank you very much. And I said, look at the tip. And she looked at the tip. She goes, oh, my, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we walked out. And I got in the car. And I told Ashley, or maybe Ashley told me, I forget. And I said, we're about to come out. We're about to come back here more and watch what's going to happen. So a couple of days went by. We got sick of McDonald's and Wendy's. And I didn't want to cook nothing from Walmart. You know what I mean? So we went back to Broadway Cafe. And as soon as we walked into the foyer of that restaurant, this lady starts jumping up and down and waving at us. She goes, hey, 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 over here, over here. She runs up to the, to the host, host person, and she says, put them in my section. She says, these are my customers from now on. Anytime, she said, anytime they're here, you put them with me. And she says, if, if, if I'm not here when they're here, she says, you make sure they get taken care of like they're my family. And so we sat down, and guess what? Our drinks were always refilled. Our food was perfect and on time. And guess what happened? I wish she accepted the Lord. Someone's trying to get all spiritual about it. You know what I mean? I shared Jesus with her, but she was kind of stuck in her ways. You know what I mean? But watch this. We start going there. We share, we, we share the gospel with her. We planted seeds. I wish I could say she gave her heart to the Lord. But you know what happened? We started going there. And watch this. She began to give us free stuff. She said, oh, hey, Liz, it's on the house. Oh, hey, look, it's on the house. Oh, don't worry about that. Oh, I took this off your bill. Don't worry about it. It's on the house. Now, guess what? I didn't tip her the bill every single time. <laughs> I went back to, I went to 19%, try to recoup that 1% over time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but listen, there's a principle there. We saw something in her that she did not see inside of herself. We honored her and we called it out of her. And because we did, we received access that we didn't have before. My friend, you need to understand this about the culture of honor. Honor is a key to the kingdom. And honor gives you access to God and it gives you access to the gift of God inside of people. Stand with me all over the room. Thanks for joining us and listening to this week's podcast. I want to give a special thanks to those who generously give to this ministry. It's because of your generosity that this ministry is made possible. If you would like to give, you can click the link in the show notes or go to overflowchurch.co slash give. If you enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe and share this with your friends. And listen, if you're in the Las Vegas area, we would love to see you at one of our weekend services. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.